Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Children of God, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're welcome to church. Let's just begin to worship God this morning. Let's just exalt our Father. Father, we worship you, O God. Father, we worship you, O God. Father, we worship you, O God. Lord, we worship you. Father, we worship you, Jesus.
like fire, like rain, let your glory fall. Like fire, like rain, let it fall. Like fire, like rain, let your glory fall. Like fire, like rain, let it fall.
I don't know what God has done for you, but He has done great things for me. As you have come this morning, hope with your heart and worship Him. Father, we worship you. Tani, 
Thank you, Jesus. You have 30 seconds to say, Thank you, Lord. I'm thanking you for how far you have brought me. Say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are not saying thank you, but it's to kill enemies, you will shout, Say, Father, I thank you. I bless you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I worship you. I exalt you, Lord. Thank him. Say, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Begin to ascribe his name unto him. Say, Father, I bless you. I honor you. You are the mighty man in battle. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. You are the God who can do all things. In you lies no impossibility. I say thank you. For your goodness towards me, I say thank you. For your grace towards me, I say thank you. For your mercy towards me, I say thank you. Thank you for fighting unseen battles. Thank you for fighting battles that I can see. I bless your holy name. Thank you for the gift of sleeping and waking up. You are not thanking God enough. Say, Father, I thank you. It's not a staring contest. It's a praise contest. Say, thank you, Jesus. The person with the loudest voice will get their first miracle. 
Father, I say thank you. I bless you, Lord. I worship you. Thank him for family. For my spouse, I say thank you. For my children, I say thank you. For my posterity, I say thank you. For future generations, I say thank you. Because they are serving God and not the devil. I say thank you. I bless you for wealth. I thank you, Lord, for the victory. I thank you for power. I thank you for the glory that you have bestowed on me. You have 10 more seconds to say thank you, Jesus. I bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We exalt your holy name. We magnify you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I put you in front, in front of my melody. You are all the matters. You are all. I'll make room, I'll make room for you and I, you and I, G. You are all the matters. Hey, you are all. Oh, hey. You are all. Away, oh, away. Hey, hey. Father, I thank you. I bless you. Father, I worship you. Father, I exalt your holy name. I give you the glory and the praise. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praised. Say loud, amen. The Bible says in Psalm 19, verse 14, it says, Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad in all our days. See, there's something called early satisfaction. When God blesses you early, you can enjoy it more. Say loud, amen. Oh, satisfy us early with your goodness. God can bless you on time. You don't have to remain stagnant. You don't have to suffer regression and retrogression again. Say, my father, my father, in the name of Jesus, anything that causes stagnancy in my life, let your mercy remove it. Pray. Anything that has caused stagnancy, delay, reproach, regression, retrogression, I command it to be gone by your mercy in Jesus' name. Pray. Father, I decree and declare, let your mercy speak for me. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are not praying with your heart. Your heart. Oh, satisfy me early with your mercy. There's a way God can satisfy you early. I'm telling you, it is very possible to be wealthy early, to marry early, to get things early. God can bless you early. You don't have to suffer. I decree and declare by your mercy, Lord. Bless me indeed. Take away every reproach from my life. In the name of Jesus, I honor you, Lord. I magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The Bible says in Psalm 92, verse 10, it says, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn, and shall anoint it with fresh oil. When God exalts your horn, he puts on you what is called favor. And favor makes a difference in any man's or a woman's life. Say, my father, my father. Say, my father, my father. Exalt my horn, Lord. Let the fullness of your favor rest upon me. Pray. Father, exalt my horn. Let the fullness of your favor, let it rest upon me. Pray. Father, exalt my horn. Let the fullness of your favor rest upon me. In the name of Jesus. Exalt my horn, Lord. Let your favor rest upon me. You are praying that prayer haphazardly. Let me tell you, if you enjoy favor, we will see it. Favor is very visible. If you are enjoying favor, it's visible, I'm telling you. So if you are not enjoying favor, pray. My father, my father, I decree and declare favor with God and man. I enjoy favor. Career-wise favor. Family-wise favor. Mentally, physically, emotionally favor. In the name of Jesus, pray for peace assembly. Our sister peace assembly, you enjoy the favor of God. Things I don't deserve is given to me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we are prayed. God can give you double promotion. Amen. God can promote you. 
God can exalt your own. God can bless you. You don't have to live from paycheck to paycheck. You don't have to suffer. No! Say loud amen. Say my father, my father. Let your favor rest upon me. And take away every suffering. Let your favor rest upon me. Let your favor rest upon me. In Jesus' name. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies. Because they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Father, we exalt you. It's not because we are smart, but your grace has been speaking for us. And we say thank you. Everybody say thank you, Jesus. Say one more time, say thank you, Jesus. Do you know the savings you have can be wiped out by one sickness? Say, Father, thank you. Father, I bless you. That I'm not a subject of pity. I say thank you. I exalt you, Lord. Father, as a, as a team, as a church, we are saying thank you. Let your name be lifted up and be glorified. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Shout a big hallelujah. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. thank you for a time like this that you have ordained even before the foundation of the earth before we were formed in our mother's womb you ordained this day that we will have an encounter with your Holy Spirit that today lives will be transformed souls will be rooted in Christ burdens will be lifted yokes will be broken then doors will be opened in the name of Jesus Father, we ask that today, that purpose you ordained today's meeting for, that you bring it to pass, you bring it to fulfillment. I come against every spirit of distraction, that in this meeting, hearts will be opened, and the seed of righteousness will be planted. From today, a new chapter will be opened in our lives and ministries, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, take all the glory. 
in Jesus precious name we pray kindly have your seat in Jesus name hallelujah I thank God almighty for another opportunity to stand before you and to share God's mind with you this season I also want to thank our pastor for giving me this opportunity to stand before you too and I pray that um, God will be continue to strengthen and to lift you up in Jesus' name. I said in one of our meetings that it's not all pastors that allow people to, you know, preach on their pulpit. Um, it takes a level of confidence, a level of self-awareness to allow other people, you know, exercise themselves. Hallelujah. Today, by his grace, um, we are continuing on our topic on the Holy Spirit. So when I was told about um, this meeting and began to ask, uh, after about two or three weeks of um, apostolic teaching on Holy Spirit, what else am I going to teach? Virtually all the scriptures on Holy Spirit have been taught. Um, is our waymaker, our advocate, is our helper, our counselor, our comforter. And I was asking God, of course, asking the Holy Spirit, um, what else am I going to say after such um, um, great teachings? And to make the case was our sister this morning who taught us and he just took up my message and preached it. And I said, <laughs> God, well, I may not have something to say, but God always has something to say. And today I believe he will speak to us. I'll be looking at uh, engaging the power of the Holy Spirit for soul winning. Engaging the power of the Holy Spirit for soul winning. Most times when we hear power as Christians, we think there are things that are dramatic, that somebody must be shaking juku 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 and fall on the ground and be, you know, um, possessed or something. No. In short, that actually shows powerlessness. Power doesn't, you know, struggle. Power gets results without struggling. And our root scripture is in Luke chapter 24, verse 89, engaging the power of the Holy Spirit for soul winning. Luke 24, verse 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Hallelujah. Like I said before, we know that the Holy Spirit is our advocate. We know it's our helper. We know it's our comforter. We know it's our way maker. But there are about seven or more symbols of the Holy Spirit. And though he symbolized with these seven things, but he is not a dove. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 6, the Bible said, the Spirit of God descended like a dove. Yes, he is um, symbolized like a dove. His gentility is a very gentle person. Hope you know the Holy Spirit is a person. Is a person. Hallelujah. When I say person, um, I mean person. I pray that one day you get to encounter him. Last week, our brother was talking about encounters. Encounters are very important. Encounter brings conviction. It brings confirmation. The Bible is a catalog, a compendium of encounters. How um, Adam encountered God. How Noah encountered God. How Moses, Abraham, every other person all encountered God. So if you have never encountered God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, or the angels, you can pray and seek God and ask him to prove himself and show himself to you. And I guarantee you, he will show himself to you. Hallelujah. I'm going to believe you can, you can see God as a Christian. You do believe you can see God. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall they shall first see God. I was in a group and somebody said they saw God and others were mocking him. And I rebuked them sharply. And I said, others are giving themselves and making themselves available for God to show himself. And the best, the best you can do um, is to mock this person. So if I tell you if I've seen God, what will you say? You also laugh at me. Then somebody wrote something. He said, I get beer beer. I like And I described God from the crown to his, the list of his garment. And I told, if, uh, I gave him a scripture that um, in the story of Lazarus and the rich man in heaven, 
when they begged Abraham to send somebody to his brothers, he said, even if somebody comes from the dead, you won't still believe. So I don't need to argue with you. Your case is already condemned. You're a Christian, but your case is already condemned. So the Holy Spirit is not a door. It's not fire. Yes, in Acts chapter 2, he appeared like a fire, but it's not fire. It's a person. In John chapter 3, verse 8, he came as a wind, but it's not a wind. It's a person. In John chapter 7, verse 38, 39, he appeared like a water. The Bible said, out of a village, I flow with water of living water. It's not water. It's a person. In First Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, um, it's a form of oil. It's not oil. Yes, you can... He, all these things can carry the anointing. The cloth, um, mantle, the you know, oil can carry the anointing, but they are not the Holy Spirit. Well, if, if you see the Holy Spirit, is a person, he doesn't wear clothes, but you don't see his nakedness. Hallelujah. Um, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, that our sister referred to this morning, is a seal. He functions as a seal. A seal, like she said correctly, um, authenticates a, a letter or anything. It shows that this thing came from the manufacturer. So when you got born again, Bible said we were sealed by the Holy Spirit. So it authenticates, it prevents adulteration, it prevents contamination. So when you get born again by the Spirit of God, then you, you know, um, you were sealed till the day of redemption. That's what the Bible said. There is some of the scriptures some people abuse and, abuse and they say, once saved, um, always saved. But that is not totally correct too. It's not a wine. Ephesians 5, 18, the Bible said, um, we should not be drunk with wine, but we should be drunk with the Holy Spirit. Yes, um, Holy Spirit can shock you, but it's not, it's not wine, it's a person. For us to totally understand you know, the Holy Spirit and its importance in our lives, then we must go back to the life of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because without the Holy Spirit, Jesus wouldn't have fulfilled his ministry. Everything about Jesus, they were all helped and perfected by the Holy Spirit. How was he conceived, Jesus? By the Holy Spirit. Remember the story of how Mary was... was um, Without a man, I've not been with a man, but she conceived Jesus by the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 2, verse um, 40, how did he grow? The Bible said he grew in stature, he grew in wisdom, and he grew in the Holy Spirit. So many Christians grow in stature. They grow in their physiology, in their anatomy, and all those other medical, biological aspects. But in the spirit, you are not growing, and there's room for growth. Hallelujah. How was he commissioned into his ministry? Jesus, Luke chapter 3. Bible said as he prayed in verse 21 to 22, the heavens were open and the Holy Spirit came upon him. Jesus couldn't do life and ministry without the Holy Spirit. Why do you think you can? That was why Pastor in one of his messages two weeks ago said that without the Holy Spirit, your failure is guaranteed. It's 100% guaranteed. Without the Holy Spirit, your failure is 100% guaranteed. You will not fail in Jesus' name. How did Jesus die? Matthew 27, verse 50. The Bible said he yielded his spirit and he died. So when the Holy Spirit left him, that was when he died. How does he resurrect? Romans chapter 8, verse 11. The Bible said if that same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwells upon your mortal body, that same spirit will quicken your mortal body and revitalize your mortal body. So even his resurrection and ascension they were all by the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? So, Bible said in the root scripture we, we looked at in Luke 24, verse 49, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Many years ago when I started ministry, there were two things that happened that, you know, made me to begin to seek God for a different dimension. I had an assistant pastor who uh, called me and said, Pastor, all this your teaching will help you. Let's go and look for power. Look for power. I said, this man, you do juju. I'm looking at you. I'm scared of you. But I didn't know he was trying to help me. 
So a member didn't come to church. My wife on high went to look for them. I won't go to the house. When we were about to leave, he said he was sick. I wanted to pray for him. He said, no, pastor, don't pray for me. Make your wife pray for you. And I was embarrassed, which means he didn't see that I was carrying anything. That was not enough. I did a program, and I invited, um, and the guy got healed, of course. Um, I did a program, invited about 30 pastors, and I think one of the pastors came, he ministered in power, and ministers in prophecy and everything. A member that would never give me a, a thousand, a one cobble, came to me, he heard about 10,000 naira those days, and said, Pastor, but that pastor will come that day. Let me give him this money. <laughs> I knew there was a problem. <laughs> then I had to go back and say, God, no. If I'm going to do this work, then I have to do it with power. Then I began to seek God. I began to fast. I began to pray. I began to seek his face. And God began to do a lot of signs and wonders in the ministry. I'm trying to make you to understand how important it is. We're looking at engaging the, Holy, the power of the Holy Spirit for soul winning. The reason why you're not getting the result, because you're not following the manual, he said, I send you the spirit of promise, the, the promise of the spirit. But wait, you know, when there's a statement and there is a but before another statement, that but negates every other thing that was you said. If this man is a rich man or was a rich man, but he no get money again. He's not a rich man. He get houses before, but none are tenant. Is he a landlord or a tenant? He's a tenant. I don't even understand what I'm saying. May God remove every bot in your life. Yeah. In Jesus' name. He said, but tarry until you are endued with power. He said, wait. And that is one of the biggest challenges Christians don't can do today. We don't know how to wait. Christians are like um, little children those days when we were small. We go to our neighbor's houses and begin to praise the bell. Pam, 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 pam. Before the landlord comes out of the house, what do we do? We run away. So you go to a place to go and pray. And you go and seek God's face. Before God will come and answer, you get up and you walk away. After you have worshipped, after you have prayed, learn to wait. He said, go and wait. Wait is wait. Wait is not speaking. Wait is not reading. Wait is, wait is not praying. Just wait. And you will be shocked what God will show to you, what God will tell you. So when you wait the first time, don't hear anything. Don't leave. Wait again. When you wait the second time, don't hear anything. Don't leave. Practice it. Get used to it. The day God will speak to you, you will never believe it. How to engage the Holy Spirit for evangelism. Hallelujah. So that scripture shows us that there are two dimensions to the Holy Spirit. We have the spirit of promise and we have the spirit of power. So the spirit of promise Every believer, the moment you receive Jesus Christ, you believe in him as your Lord and Savior, he comes into you automatically. You don't struggle to receive. Once you believe Jesus is the Lord and Savior, he comes into you. Because when God created man, you go to the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The Bible said he made man from the dust of the head, and he breathed into that man, and the man became a living soul. So man has body, spirit, and soul. So when you get born again, that spirit that the Lord breathed upon that man is not the Holy Spirit. It's your human spirit, your breath of life. So when the Holy Spirit comes, he now comes to convert your spirit man. Your spirit man becomes born again, but your flesh remains the same. So a man can come to the altar and get born again, but physically he's still looking the same. His attitudes are not changed. Why? Because the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is the working out your salvation from your spirit out to your outward man as a man. Hallelujah. So, and your soul stands judgment. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that when a man dies, what happens to his flesh? Goes back to the ground. What happens to his spirit? Goes back to God that it came from. But your soul, that's how we are soul winners. So everything you have done just like if you study a little bit of cyber security, you understand that even when you delete from your desktop and you go to the empty trash and you delete, there is still a record. 
there's a place called a log. There's still a record of that at every activity that this computer has ever done. There is a place, the sites you opened, the pages you opened, what you, everything is recorded. So your soul is your spiritual database. That is where everything is recorded. And that is what will be judged on that day. That is the reason why, as of today, you don't know if your soul, yes, you are born again, but it's on that day that we will determine who will really make it or not. Because the Bible says, he that endures to the end, that what? That will be saved. Yes, you are saved today. You are saved today, 100%. The moment you get born again. But it is when the trumpet sounds that you really know the true state of a man. That is the reason why in heaven there will be surprises. There are people you think you will not see, you will see them. There are people you think you will see, you will not see them. Hallelujah. So we have the spirit of promise. That spirit of promise is for every believer. But that spirit of promise will not raise the dead. That spirit of promise will not um, um, open blind eyes. It will not do signs and wonders. It's strictly for salvation. But there's, uh, the same Holy Ghost gives you the first one. The same Holy Ghost gives you the empowerment of the second one, which is called power. And that what happened in Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. The Bible said, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Hallelujah. Verse 18. He replied and said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. May Satan fall from your life in the name of Jesus. Verse 19, he said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to everyone all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirit submits to you, but rejoice that your name are written where? In heaven. So there are two different things. One is about salvation. Why one is about works? The that of the salvation, he said, rejoice about this one. That of the works, don't rejoice about this. So the moment God begins to use you in great signs and wonders and prophecies and all that, you know, you must learn how to control yourself. I remember the first time the Lord used me to minister. He was a chief executive of a federal university. He was traveling, he had accidents, and he had spinal cord injury. And they said he wasn't going to come back to work again. And I was praying, the Lord opened my eyes, and the guy came back. And I came to work, and I said, ah, this man came back to work. I saw him, the cloth he wore, um, the office he entered, the offices he entered, and the people he greeted. They are all, I, I told some of my colleagues. So the day he came back to, to um, school, um, I was not in school, so people began to call me. This man came back, just the way you said it, everything. So what happened to me? I took a very big Bible. And I was going to work, and I wore a very long shoe, and I became mighty prophet. No, when God begins to use you, the more you humble yourself, um, the more he will um, exalt you, use you. Hallelujah. So I just want to show you that the first one is very important, but we also need to work on the second one. So the spirit of promise, you can also see it again in Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Spirit, you can see that, he poured out this which you have seen today. So, you don't come into God's kingdom and become a pastor. No. Like our mama said in one of our teachings, you grow in the faith. You come in as a member, usher, worker, whatever it is. When I joined the body of Christ, I was an usher, Sunday school teacher, I think I was to be ordained a deacon. And the Lord said, no, I'm not called to be a deacon. I should leave. And I left. So you grew in the spirit. Hallelujah. So he said, then Peter said, repent and let every one of you be baptized in, sorry, 2033. He said, the promise of the spirit. He poured out this which you can see. So this promise of the spirit is for salvation. And in verse 38, he said, then Peter said to them, repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and you shall what? Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Still talking about salvation. Titus 3, 4 to 7. 
Titus 3, 4 to 7. But when the kindness of the Lord our God, Savior, towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of the regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. What am I trying to say? That when you get born again, the first spirit is the same spirit. I don't use first spirit to today as I use that Holy Spirit. The only one Holy Spirit is the only one God. Somebody asked the other day, when we get to heaven, how many people are going to see? Are we going to see God, see Jesus, see the Holy Spirit? So no, it's one person manifesting himself in different ways. It's even because of us, he's coming as Jesus. Because of us, he's coming as Holy Spirit, serving different dispensations. There was a time he dealt with man directly. He came to um, Adam in the cool of the evening, and he came again as Jesus. Now he's coming as the Holy Spirit. We are in his dispensation. We are in his government. If you are not engaging the Holy Spirit, you are missing a lot. It's like somebody going to lobby, how would I say, um, Trump for Biden to give him a contract. Without, without work. There are two different governments. This is a different government. This is a different go- This is the government of the Holy Spirit. And you must engage him. And you must learn to talk to him. He hears you. He listens to you. You must tell him how you feel. You must tell him what you want. When I was growing up in faith, they used to ask us to um, talk to the Holy Spirit to make us to pray. How many of you tried when you were growing up? You never tried when you were growing up. So Holy Spirit, wake me up 2 o'clock to pray. And what will happen? You have to look at the time you wake up. When I couldn't sleep, I'll say, I cannot sleep. Please make me sleep. In less than 30 seconds, I'll go. There was a time I had the Holy Spirit to, um, you know, I heard the man of God preaching because if I hear anything, I like to go and practice it. There was a time I heard a woman say that um, and she doesn't eat again from Thursday to Sunday after service. I said, wow. And I began to do it. And God began to open my eyes. So if I hear anything from the great man of God, that's what you are doing. I'll go and do it too. So I heard the man of God preaching. He said, he said the Holy Spirit, I want to feel your hand. And I told the Holy Spirit, I want to feel my hand. So I went to bed and I slept normal. I didn't say, I didn't want to go to bed. And I heard somebody... So I turned, I told my wife, why are you waking me up now? Why are you tapping me? And she said, I didn't touch you. Then I knew something. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was scary, but at the same time, it's real. You need to talk to him as a person. The way you talk to your wife, the way you talk to your husband, the way you talk to your parents, the way you talk to your children, just talk to him. You'll be shocked how he will respond back to you. So the first was the spirit of um, promise, second the spirit of power. And this is also confirmed in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Remember, he told them, tarry until you are endued. That is the price you need to pay. You must learn how to wait. You must learn how to tarry. It's a big mistake for us to send people out without you know, engaging them through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So there are two different things. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ with what? Holy Ghost and power. They're not the same thing. The Holy Ghost came for salvation. The power came for ministration. So if you want to minister to the sick, you you are drawing from your belly. That is why among the gifts... And among the fruits, um, the most important fruit of the spirit is love. Is that true? And the most important gift according to the Bible, I suppose I wish that we all prophesy, is the gift of prophecy. So you must exercise genuine love for you to manifest God's gifts. You must have genuine concern for people's needs. And when God begins to use you, it will not only show you good things. It will show you some people's secrets. It will show you some people's, some negative things that will happen to people. You must exercise boldness to share these things. I remember a story of somebody. I didn't even know he had that problem. I think they seized his results. So I was um, praying one day, and the Lord opened my eyes, and I saw um, somebody, this person, um, showing his mother his results. And I 
came to church and I said, I saw somebody showing me. He's showing his mother his result. This guy was going to work the next day. He saw somebody who was, he was working in a car wash. He saw somebody who was his classmate who did the exam with him in the same center. And this person told him, ah, I'm a, this thing we did two years ago, that released the result. I said, seriously, two years. So he ran down to the school, collected the result. And because we were, he was working in a car wash, he didn't want to carry the certificate to the car wash to get wet. He said, let me take it home and keep. Remember, they already left home. This guy, his parents were separated. His mother lives in Calabar, while his father lives in Benin, where we were residing. So by the time he got home, the mother took night bus from Calabar to Benin without his information. The mother was sitting in front of his door waiting for him, and he came home with his result, fulfilling that prophecy that he was showing his mother the result. So there are many good things about people God will show you, but there are also negative things. So it's not for you to begin to gossip them. It's for you to intercede for them. It's for you to begin to, you know, counsel them and tell them, look at what the Lord is showing me. Like when we were to come to America, or before long we came to America, my other brother was complaining, coming to America. He didn't tell me anything. He was hiding. You know, in Benin, when you're traveling, you don't tell your brothers. You hide it. So he did it for me. So I was praying, God opened my eyes, and I saw him. He was showing me what was hiding from me in the physical. He was showing me in, in, the, in, in, in the spirit. And I said, sent him a text. I saw you getting all your visas for your wife and children. And after that, they started calling me pastor. Before then, they didn't call me pastor. What am I saying? God will show you things. And God will also show you certain things about certain people that are not palatable. Palet, um, there was a woman who, I, was, I wasn't praying for her. I was just praying. I got open my eyes and I saw her that she died. I said, okay. This one will let me talk. <laughs> this one will let me talk. And the Lord impressed me, I must tell her. I prayed again, the same thing came. What should I do? Um, I wanted to send her a text. The Lord said, Don't send her a text. Tell her. I said, Okay, I'll go to her house and tell her. He said, No, tell her in the middle of service. Let that person here. How do I tell somebody that's looking healthy that she's going to die? Our children are there, everybody they are there. Then how would I do that? And I had to walk up to her and I told her, Madam, sorry, what I'm saying, I've prayed, I've impressed upon God, but this is what I'm saying. You're going to die. And she shook her head. She had no problem if that is God's will. After a month, I conducted a funeral. And later I heard from my family she had had cancer for eight years. And she had lost so much blood and she had gone so much through so much pain. And the, even the family agreed that that was the best thing for her, being what she has gone through. So there are dangerous things God will show you, but all, they are all for his glory and for the edification of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his will. So you are not planning to use Holy Spirit. He's one that will use you. <laughs> I see people tell Holy Spirit, move. I say, oh, it is you that want to move, not the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, stretch your hand. No, it is you that will stretch your hand, not the Holy Spirit. You can't use God. God has a plan already, a redemptive plan for the world. And he has different persons he's using at different places. And you, it's only those, like they say in my place, it's only a child that's at home and is available that his parents can send message. What that actually means is that that child will know certain secrets about his parents that other children who are in Lagos and other places will not know. So if the father has the land, he will know. If the father has something else, he will, he will know because of his closeness to his father. So if you make yourself available to God in the place of the secret, God will open to you the secret of his riches while others will be struggling out there. The information will be given to you to succeed. And they went out and they preached everywhere. And the Lord walking with them, confirming the word through the accompanying with signs and wonders. You see, I was discussing my wife yesterday and I said, I have a very big burden for the body of Christ. One, um, the future of the church 
is in Africa. Africa is the last hope. Because every time you hear a church have accepted one kind of marriage, just watch. That's in denomination, the African branch, clearly the Nigerian, we say, we set ourselves from it. We stand with the old motel. Any new doctrine they bring, the African church will say no. But the fact is that the African church still has its own problem. We know, we know be marrying men, but we are sleeping with other people's wives. We know be marrying men, we are sleeping with choir members. And we are using church funds for things we ought not to use them for, for our own personal aggrandizement. So if the African church does not cleanse itself, that role it has to help the body of Christ, you know, to bring that revival um, to fruition, would not be because you have to first cleanse yourself. Because in a, before it ever take place, there's reawakening, becoming aware of the things you are wrong, there's outpouring of God's spirit before the revival comes. So the body of Christ has a big role. What we are experiencing today is growth. We have the greatest men of God. We have the greatest auditoriums. We have the largest amount of um, membership in the in, in body of Christ. Everything, but there's no revival. And that is dangerous because every other growth in church history was the reason of a revival. So how come there is growth without revival? Not every growth in our body is good. Some growth could be fibrous, some growth could be <laughs> cancerous. So there is a need for us to go back to the prayer, the place of prayer, because place of prayer is the best place of revival. And I was glad when I was following this program, um, the glory ahead, you know, online, the parts where the young persons, they call them yaya or so, young adults, um, something, they were questioning Papa. And those questions were very heavy. I'm like, ah, these children have mind, though. They want to be part of the <laughs> group. Ah. They will ask them that um, people are living because of no signs and wonders and everything. I say, yes, I've spoken to the elders. You two, help me to talk to them, to pray. He said, but if they're not doing it, they'll not stop you from doing it. He said, you, don't fight for position. What should you do for? He said, fight for the anointing. Fight for the spirit. He said, the gift that you have will make way for you. The same thing happened in the Bible. Eli was in office, but Samuel had the spirit. Eventually, what happened? Samuel entered into this office. Um, King Saul was in the office, but who had the spirit? David. Eventually, David became king. So you don't have to compete or drag anything with anybody. Today, there are people that are even preaching online, preaching on the street, preaching everywhere. You can get people and direct them back to the house where you are serving. And this is a responsibility for every believer. This time is to reach out for souls through your gifts and lead them back to God's house. Engaging the Holy Spirit. So when those questions were asked and he gave those words, I said, the depth of wisdom that this man has is, you know, you can, these things can only come from God. If you're not close to God, you can't. He said something that even at his level, when he has a program, days before that program, what does he do? Say he shuts himself indoor. This is the generation that everything is quick, quick, microwave and apps. There's no app for the Holy Spirit. You can't download any Holy Ghost app. Because now, if you need a car, if you need food, if you need groceries, anything you need, you can even go to school, you know, through one app. But concerning the Holy Spirit and the anointing, there is no quick way to it. There is a price to pay. You must go back, go back to your knees, go back to study, go back to be hungry and be thirsty, and go back to, you know, reaching out for souls and bringing souls to God's house. Hallelujah. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, for our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power. So when we are going to preach out there, you are not going to look for the sick, you're not going to look for the dead to raise. No, that one knows what you're going to do. The Bible says that God cannot give you, you know, a problem that you cannot handle because he that is in you is already greater than he that is in the world. But when God knows you carry something, he will send somebody to you. 
So the person may come in this form. I don't know my daughter, I just miss baby. Anytime I talk to her, she doesn't listen. God is asking you to cancel and to pray. Say, madam, can I just pray with you concerning your daughter? You think she will refuse? No, she will not refuse. Just a very short prayer. That, that girl will be converted. The mother will be happy and get the first person they will look for. You. And what will you do? Bring them to church. Somebody will tell you, I don't know why anytime I have money and this money does not last in my hand. You <laughs> call the person, can I just pray with you? And you pray with the person and the person notices changes and the person comes back to testify to you. And what will you do? Come on, let me show you the place where I enjoy all these things. Except we do this, we cannot penetrate the body of Christ, these um, Westerners. My biggest fear is that the church in America is a receptor. If we do environmental issues, there are some places they cannot channel flood water, so they will dig certain holes so that all the water in that area will flow, flow to there. So Nigerian churches are not penetrating into the environment. In those days, when the white people came to, like Benida, I know very well. So if you go to an average church, you see two, three white men, and the rest are blacks. Is that true? But today, when you come to America, we are bringing the gospel back to them. But we are not seeing them. Who are we seeing? Nigerians. So the moment Nigeria comes from um, Nigeria and comes back, is so we need to influence our environment. And the only way you can influence an environment is not just by preaching, but showing them something that they don't have. Giving them something beyond it. So you can be singing and people are getting healed. You can be teaching and people are testifying. But it is not enough to just be born again. You must get born again and you must seek that power to be able to penetrate into areas that the church has not been able to penetrate into. Hallelujah. The way your voices are low, oh, I'm, I'm not offending you. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just trying to make us to realize the burden and the responsibility that we have. It's upon us. And I don't want to say it's easy, but the truth is that it's, um, it's simple. You don't have to shake. You don't have to dramatize. You don't, you don't have to fall. No, just learn how to hear. Just learn how to see. Just learn how to lay your hands. Just learn it. And you, 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 actually, if you come for events like all night, that's what all nights are designed for. Just like when I was told I'll be preaching for this, this um, apart from the title of the message I was going to preach, I was asking God, I do not just want to quote scriptures because the difference between a CRK teacher and a pastor is the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you're just a normal CRK teacher. God, give me a word for your people. So God gave me two words. One, um, the Lord said there was somebody that was going to get a miracle job. And I was like, I was like, which is a miracle job, God? He said, like Joseph, said, this job, they will look for you. Amen. I said, how is that possible? He said, like Daniel was sent for, the person will be sent for. The second thing that the Lord showed me, I saw a young man who came into this country to the route of a student. I think he became a student. And the visa for the student that have expired has finished. And he's trying to renew it to, you know, to remain behind. And the Lord showed me a form that he submitted. And the Lord also showed me a catalog of the responses that the internal office are writing. And this thing is in his favor. This person um, is married. I saw a woman close to him. And I also saw that he has a connection with London. I don't know if it's his relation or somebody in London. He has a relationship with London. So what am I saying? If you go to God and ask, he will show you. You just need to ask. You must learn how to hear. We don't hear the same way. Just tell him to ask and he will show you. Hallelujah. In the book of um, Acts chapter 19, there were people who were already born again, but they have not received the Holy Spirit. And Peter, when he got there, he was like, ah, oh no, I think it was Paul. 
No, it was Peter. Paul at Ephesus, sorry. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, finding some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is Holy Spirit. So what you have not heard of, you can't manifest. Because there is a place of knowledge. The first one is faith, but the second is knowledge. As we come into the body of Christ, we come in as faith. We believe and we receive, but you must grow. That was why the Bible said, they that know their God, they shall be strong and do great exploits. It said, you shall know the truth, and the truth that you know will what? Apostle Paul prayed, that I may know him. The things you know, nobody can deceive you. You must get to that point. If I tell you, make a bath for me, get some cups of rice and get some oil, boil the oil and turn the rice into it and make a bath for me. We will do, even an angel tells you that, will, will you obey? No, because you know how to make a bar, and nobody can deceive you concerning you. So the moment you know God, that was why even when um, Job was in that crisis, he said, I know, I redeem and live it. The moment you know God, that this is how God works, there is no storm, the enemy will come against you that will shake you. I know that this matter, the same God that brought me out of the first one, second, the third one, he will still, I know. Do you know your God? So these persons did not know the Holy Spirit. So we don't even know him. So when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That is salvation. Then Paul laid his hands on them and the Holy Spirit came upon them. And what happened? They spoke in tongues. So among the fruits, when somebody gets born again, the first gift he received is the gift of love. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, that he has spread his love abroad in our hearts. But when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, the first is what? He's speaking in tongues. But it is not the only one. There are still many. So if you understand the, um, how the, the Tamanaku was arranged, they had the outer court. They had the inner court. They had the holies of holies. The outer court was um, open. The sun was the light. The inner court was the lampstand, about seven candles. While the holies of holies, the glory of God was the light. So in the inner court, when you have to light the candle, you don't light each um, candle. You put the first one, second one. No, no. What you do, you set only one on. You will not take that one to hide the rest. So the first gift you receive is the gift of speaking in tongues. But when you continue to speak in tongues, what will happen there? You begin to see. You begin to hear. You begin to lay hands. Look at what happened to them. What happened? The Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and did what? And prophesied. Are you with me? So that is how it works. So can you imagine you... Um, either it's your boss or somebody and the person wants to travel and you call the person, there's a journey about to embark upon, please just um, delay it for like two hours or delay it for like two days. And the person is shocked. How did you get to me? Because you have the spirit of discernment. These are gifts that the Holy Spirit, the Bible says when Christ ascended, these gifts were released to men. They are available. If you seek God, you expose you to the ones you have. You have them already. Some of you are already manifesting in these gifts. Many of us are scared to share them. We are scared to, you say, um, I remember those days when I just started, if I um, give a word of prophecy and nobody comes out, I'll be scared for the next three months to share again. But I got to a point where I became dead in Christ. There are so many things I shared, nobody came out. But after the service, somebody will come out and say, this thing you said, I'm the one. And I'll still pray with them and they'll come back with testimony. There was even a dangerous case of a lady. I was to travel to Abuja for, to Kaduna through Abuja. I'll take flight from Benin to, to Abuja, then get to Kaduna. Um, so I was to leave on Sunday. I was a little bit in, in, in a hurry. So I was rushing the service so that I can meet up with the flight and not miss the flight. But as I was rushing up the service, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw a lady who was having pains in her breast. And I was like, 
Is there any lady here that has pain in her breast? Nobody answered. Thank God, me, I'm rushing. I closed the service and I left. Just for me to come back on Tuesday from the meeting in Kaduna, and somebody rushed to me and said, did you hear this person's wife died? She died of cancer of the breast. If she'd have been in church, probably should have received prayers, probably should have, I don't know. So you don't allow your failures to deny you the opportunity of success. As you begin to go out and allow the Holy Spirit to use you, remember you're not using the Holy Spirit only to use you. Don't be scared about the ones that didn't happen. Just keep on doing what God is showing you. Know that he's sincere. Know that it's not from your flesh. Know that you're not doing it for pride or for gain. You are doing it to you know, glorify God's name and to bring souls to his house. And as you do that, you find out that God will begin to release more and more through you. Hallelujah. I just, I don't have much time. I just want to talk about the Holy Spirit and um, church growth. Five minutes, then I come down from here. Just five minutes. Isaiah 32, verse 15, please. Isaiah 32, verse 15. If we have to grow, we all must seek the Holy Spirit. We can't do that in a Sunday service like this. Coming here all night and to pray and pray. What the Bible say? Until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high, the wilderness will be a fruitful field. And a fruitful field will be counted as a forest. What's the Bible saying? We can't move to the next level of our growth and expectation until we learn how to seek the heart point of the Holy Ghost. It is so, there's, there's no other way. That was how the apostles did their ministry. That was how Jesus did his ministry. And is the way we are going to do this ministry. We all will come, we will seek him, and he will speak to us, and he will speak through you. And I like what Papa said, uh, Papa Deboye said. He said, the rooms are opened. It's not just five for position. If there's anything, this, you can go back to the pastor while I was praying, see what the Lord showed me concerning this person. He, at his level of maturity, will know how to relate. Are you with me? Acts chapter, 20, Acts chapter 2, verse 40 and 41. And by many words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from the perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added. Can you see? When they were engaged the Holy Spirit, they brought increase. Acts chapter 4, verse 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 4. However, Many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about what? 5,000. By the Holy Spirit, they brought increase. Acts chapter 5, verse 13. Yet none of the rest dared to join them. Why? Because at this stage, you know, somebody died because of the person lied. So the Bible said that the outsiders were scared to join them. And believers were increasing hearted to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. So it led from 3,000 to 5,000 to multitudes. Read verse 16. Also, a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem. That's how it works, by the Holy Spirit. If you're going to experience first service, second service, overflow, and all that, each one of us must begin to exercise our gifts and, you know, the talents that the Lord has given to us. And like we learned this morning, which was a perfect study, no one is born empty. No one. You have something. You only need to identify it. And like Paul told Timothy, he said, by the reason of use, any gift you don't use does not grow. By the reason of use. So the more you use it, the more it will grow, the more, you know, God will give you more assignments based on that gift. Hallelujah. Can we stand upon our feet? Father, Lord, we thank you for your word that came forth today. We ask that today only your name be glorified. We thank you that we will not be hearers only, but doers. Open up your mouth and begin to pray and say, Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for this word. 
no foul spirit will steal this word from my heart. I will not be a hearer only, but be a doer that I may be partaker of the blessings and a crown of righteousness will be reserved for me. scriptures and we come to a close. Luke 11 verse 13. Luke 11 verse 13. Can you please help me? I want everybody to see it. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? How do you receive the Holy Spirit? You ask. Very simple. No, no drama. No folly. In Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit fell upon them and began to speak in tongues. Did anybody fall? Were there any shaking? Did any chair break? So where did you get it from? No drama. Just believe you have received. And Bible said you have received. Second scripture, Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and that you shall what? Receive the Holy Spirit. Um, sorry, Acts 5.32, sorry. I gave the wrong scripture. Acts 5.32. Just want to make this point. Acts 5.32. And we are his witness of the things and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God have given to them that what? Obey him. God gives the Holy Spirit the anointing to those who obey him. The way we love ourselves, I can tell my wife I love you, I can tell pastor I love you. In the spirit, we don't tell spirits we love you. The only way we tell spirits we love you is by obeying them. That's why Christ said, if you love me, do what? Obey me. So if you're not, you're not obeying him, then you're telling God, I don't send you, I don't love you. And God cannot give you his spirit not give you that extra anointing because you are not obeying him. Father, from today, I ask for grace to obey you in all your instructions, in all your will, all the things you have asked me to do. I ask for grace to walk in purity, to walk in righteousness, to walk in obedience in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Praise the Lord. Have we been blessed today? Are we truly blessed today? Uh, so let us uh, stand, raise our hands, and ask that the Holy Spirit too will fill our, our brother, our pastor. Let us ask that the anointing of the Holy Spirit on him will continue to flow, to overflow him in the name of Jesus. That God Almighty, who has called him, will continue to use him for even greater works. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we commit your son unto your hands. That you, God Almighty, who has called the mighty God, continue to use him. Fill him anew with the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. And let him do great exploits for you. That in all, Father, his life will fulfill your purpose. And your name and your name alone be glorified. Thank you, mighty King. Be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah, we have been taught that the Holy Spirit causes us to obey. 
and we receive the Holy Spirit in abundance when we obey. Now we want to obey in paying our tithes. Obedience in paying our tithes. So those of us who want to pay our tithes today, if you please, in obedience, step out. When we obey God Almighty, he fills us with the power of the Holy Spirit and he enables us Any tight pairs in the house today? Or none? Okay, that's fine. I'd like for you to speak into your tights. Ask that God Almighty, He Himself will hear you, even as you have come forth to, in obedience. That God Almighty will cause the blessings of obedience to abide with you. In Jesus' name. And so church, even as these ones have come to obey, join me as we pronounce these blessings of obedience unto them. I read from Psalms 128. It says, Blessed are all those, and blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. Amen. Say, you will eat the fruits of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine. Your husband will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live and see your children's children in Jesus' mighty name. Please drop your cards. Offering time. Offering time. Now we want to be blessed even as we come before the Lord God with our offerings. Come joyfully rejoicing with your offerings before the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Please. Praise the Lord. Let's be on our feet as we come rejoicing to give our offerings. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Hey. He's a sound of victory.
Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let us stretch our hands onto our offerings and decree what we want God Almighty to do for us, even in obedience, as we bring these offerings before his throne. Open your mouths and pray. Ask God. He says, ask me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Eternal Father in heaven, behold the offerings of your people. Mighty King, before your throne of grace we lay these offerings in joy and in celebration of your goodness. Holy Spirit, we pray that you accept this from us in Jesus' name. Let these offerings be like a sweet smelling savour that will rise up to your heavens in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we pray, let these offerings be like as keys that will open the heavens over our people and therefore pour your blessings upon your people. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. So if today is your first time in the service here on a Sunday morning like this, can you please signify by raising up your hand? If you are invited to church today and today is your first time, anyone in the house, can you please raise your hand? Anyone? Okay, so that tells us that we need, we've been admonished this morning at the Sunday school that we should occupy till Jesus returns. We have those friends, neighbors, colleagues, that need to hear the word. As we are being blessed, God entrusts us also to reach out to people that they will also partake of this blessing. So we will not be selfish. I pray that the Lord will help us to reach out to people and invite them to church in the mighty name of Jesus. And that leads me to the announcements. So on Monday, the women in the house, praise the Lord. We meet every Monday between the hours of 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. on Zoom to pray and intercede together as women. So every Monday by 9 p.m., the Zoom link is always on the church platform. You can join, and it's always an awesome, awesome time in the presence of God where we pray and burdens are lifted. So this Monday, be encouraged to join between the hours of 9 and 10 p.m., and the Lord will bless us as we do in Jesus' name. Then on Wednesdays, we have our digging deep between the hours of 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. And that holds in the church auditorium, so it holds both on-site and online. So we are encouraged to come to church every Wednesday by 7 p.m. And that is why, where we are able to dig deep into the Word of God, ask questions on those things that are troubling us. On Sunday service like this, we may not have the opportunity to raise up our hands and ask questions but we can come on Wednesdays to church by 7 p.m. And for those of us that are not able to come physically on site, we can also join virtually. It is always streamed on the church platform on YouTube. And as we do so, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Every Friday we pray together. The Bible says we ought to pray and not to faint. So there is always prayers on the church platform every Friday between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. We pray every Friday, but this particular Friday is a special one, and it is tagged Solution Night. If we're excited in the house, shall we? Can we pray? Clap our hands. So this Friday is Solution Night, and the Bible says, while men were sleeping, the enemy came to sow tears. And so there's a lot, a lot of transactions that happen in the place of the night, and God wants us as children to stand in the place of prayer to tarry. Do you remember we told this morning we need to wait in the presence of God? So this Friday we are coming physically to church between the hours of 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. And I pray that every problem we bring this Friday, before we step out of this auditorium, there will be solutions to them in Jesus' name. So let's come and be expectant and invite someone. That person that you've been praying to or the person that has been troubling you with a problem, invite the person over to come for the solution night. And I know they will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. 
Every Sunday, the church starts by 9.30 a.m. for Sunday school. And there's something we normally say in Nigeria that every Sunday school you miss is like a treasure that has been thrown into an ocean. It's difficult to recover it. So Sundays, we should come to church by 9.30 a.m. And that is where we have our Sunday school. We have our different classes and we have amazing teachers that have been teaching us and expounding the word of God to us. So please come. Don't just come when it's time for dancing. Let's start by coming early for the Sunday school at 9.30. Get yourself prepared on Saturday night and come to church on time for Sunday service, which starts with Sunday school. And by 10 a.m., the main worship service starts. And usually the service ends around 12 noon. And also, we have been mandated by General Overseer Pastor E.A. Adeboye. There's a vision of the church, and that is called Vision 2032. And this vision centers and borders on evangelism. There are a lot of empty seats in the church, and I'm sure God will not be happy coming, seeing us and seeing very big empty seats. So the Vision 2032, we have our responsibilities, and one of them is Operation 1 to 1 to 1. Meaning that you talk to someone and invite that person to church and let that follow up that person until the person becomes established in the church. And that person too will bring in somebody. And if every one of us seated here today bring one person to church next Sunday, you can imagine there will be overflow. And very soon we start having second services and all that. There are many people out there that need to hear about Jesus. So Vision 2032 is for us. And remember we're told this morning that he that winneth so is wise and i'm sure we all want to be wise so let's focus more on evangelism pray for the church growth invite people tell people about jesus if somebody has not been coming because of distance volunteer to bring people to church call them and let them come to church and tell people everywhere we go and the lord would help us in jesus name and next sunday by the grace of god there's celebration in the house hallelujah so our beloved mommy is is celebrating our 60th birthday together with the son's graduation. Uh, mommy Princess Esther Alayo, her 60th birthday celebration is being displayed, and the address is there on the screen. So next Sunday by 2 p.m., we are all invited, and we are told to come looking fabulous. And the Lord will help us as we come in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all. We give you all the glory. sent to us through our pastor, Pastor Efe. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Uh, I want to read from Isaiah 55, verse 11 and verse 12. Verses 11 and 12 say, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. 
Brethren, you are stepping out of this place and you are going into the world. And what people say is that the kind of words you hear from there is it is not possible. It is over. It is incurable. It is beyond repair. You keep hearing people saying there is nothing more we can do to help you. But not that is not the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord says you will go there, you will prosper. Amen. Say you will go there, you will be healed, you will advance, he will multiply grace to you. So what we are going to ask God today based on that word we have just read is that Lord, let your word that I've had today find a place of fulfillment in my life. Let my life embrace your word and let my life be a pleasure to you. Lord, you have sent your word and your word will not come back to you void. It will accomplish great things in my life. It will accomplish great things in my family. It will accomplish great things in this church. Father, let your word by the Holy Spirit do us good in Jesus' name. Father, we refuse to go back empty. We go back full. We go back fulfilled. We go back with your great favor and might. Father, today, let your word accomplish great things in our life. Let it accomplish great things. Let it prosper. Let it bear fruit. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now, we're going into the week, and we're going to take the next verse, which says, For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing Amen. and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Amen. You're going to pray and declare to yourself again, Lord as I step out, I go forth with joy, with peace, with success. Lord, I go forth things breaking through for me, breaking forth for me in the name of Jesus. No hindrance no resistance from the pit of hell. I go forth prosperous. I go forth with your command to conquer, to overcome, to occupy. Trees of the field shall clap their hands. I will be successful. I will occupy till you come. Mazoke carobo shake it, a crelebo zima kusha katakala gralemo. Ah, this week I will experience a new beginning, fresh anointing. Holy Spirit will anoint me with fresh oil. I will not lack any good thing. My spirit will be revived. My prayer life will receive a spiritual boost. Rivers will open for me in high places. The Lord will make a way where there is no way. Every wilderness will open. Every time I call on God, answers will come. I will not miss the voice of the God. I will not miss the voice of the Lord for, di for direction in life. This week I'm changing levels in Jesus' name. Sickness will not find any way to afflict me. Cancer, high blood pressure, diabetes will never, never, never be my portion. 
Lord, flush them out by your precious blood. I am walking into my inheritance this week. God is taking over the battle of my life. Subduing every enemy ahead of me. Every barrier to my lifting and promotion. I pray and decree that they will be destroyed. Terminate every setback. I will not experience any setback this week. It will be forward movement. In the mighty name of Jesus. I revoke every negative medical verdict. Contrary to your word, oh God. Your word. Your power will catapult me from where I am to where you want me to be. By reason of the word we have had today, our life will take a new dimension. Lord, you will bless us with your wisdom. You will strengthen us, O oh God. You will encourage us, O oh God. Every door of sorrow, the enemy is planning for us. We shut it permanently in Jesus' name. That will pass us over. Sickness will pass us over in in the name of Jesus, the Lord will restore unto us everything the devil has stolen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Our Father, we thank you. For sending out your word. Lord, thank you because this word will find a place of fulfillment in our life. It will prosper. It will direct. It will heal. In the name of Jesus. Father, you pour your spirit upon us afresh in the name of Jesus. We will experience you in a new dimension in the name of Jesus. Lord, we will know we will not continue to struggle. We will not struggle in vain. Everything we lay our hands on will prosper. Father, we will not die before our time. We will live to enjoy the fruit of our labor. We will arise and we will shine. Because your spirit, Lord, will dwell upon us in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. We bless your holy name. And this week will be a glorious one. It will be a glorious one. Full of pleasant surprises. It will be a glorious one. Full of your favor. In the name of Jesus. We will see, we will hear, and we will experience new things from you in Jesus' name. Lord, we are grateful. Our life will be a blessing to others story changer. Amen. You will change our story. Amen. We'll enjoy you and we'll serve you till the end in Jesus' name. We will not fail, we will not fall. We will not falter. We will reach our goal in Jesus' name. We'll fulfill every plan of God for our lives in Jesus' name. Gates of opportunity for advancement. They will be opened unto us this week. All that we need God will provide. The hand of the Lord will shield us. We shield our family members from every danger in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you. Please, this week, decorate our life with the beauty and your, and your honor in the name of Jesus. Give us victory on a platter of gold. Every storm of life, may we not experience them. We move from glory to glory. The peace of God will settle in our hearts. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father. We are grateful. We bless and we worship you. Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now we are going to shout hallelujah seven times. Praise the Lord. 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 The shouting side is the victorious side. Go and prosper in Jesus' name. Shall we share the grace and fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, his goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go and prosper. And the altar is open. The choir, go ahead. Chocolate.